What's up everybody? We are back with our third variation of Tadig made using lavash, or in my case, a flour tortilla because I couldn't find lavash in Central Oregon. Um, either of those are gonna work really well. If you can't find lavash or you just happen to have a white flour tortilla on hand, let's use that. It's gonna be super good and behave in the exact same way as a lavash would. So this variation is so good and is actually the one that I make the least often just because I tend to be partial to the rice ones. But you might find that this one is your favorite. Love that for you. It is caramely, it is crisp, it is crunchy, fried. It's so good. We are using all of the same principles that we've used in the past, which includes par cooking the rice um, after having soaked it for a nice long time, and then using a kind of medium heat to set our crust and then letting the rice and the tidy finish cooking at a lower heat to steam and crisp up. So nothing is gonna be very different. I'm gonna to try to breeze through this one a little bit more quickly than I have in the past. So if you haven't kind of gotten used to how to par cook and you want a little bit more detail on that, go to the first Tidig video. In terms of the, the bread base that we're gonna use for mine, this is about an 11 inch tortilla burrito size, I guess. Um, and you'll see that it's a little bit bigger than the bottom of the pot, which is what we want, because it's gonna seize up and become more compact when it fries. And if you get lavash, that comes out in these sheets, right? It's like rectangular sheets. So pull out one of those sheets and then place this, your lid, on top of it, and just use a knife to kind of cut off the excess. That'll give you that perfect circle for the bottom of your pot. Um, other things that you need, as usual, we want two and a half cups of white basmati rice. Um, I'm trying to decide, do I wanna give you a rice lecture right now? Okay, so I decided to edit out the lecture about white basmati rice. Just use white basmati rice. Consider getting it from a Middle Eastern market if you're making a lot of Persian dishes. Message me if you want more information. We have a neutral oil, we have butter, we have a colander to strain our rice in, we have a clean dish towel that we're going to wrap around the lid. And that's it. What I'm gonna do now is strain my rice that I've been soaking for about an hour. We wanna do at least 30 minutes. And then I'm gonna put it in the steaming pot and par cook it for about seven minutes. Okay, so my rice is par cooked and strained. Started in earnest on the tidy, I want you to take your nonstick skillet or nonstick pot. We're gonna to add to the base um, a tablespoon of your delicious butter, and then we're gonna do three tablespoons of your neutral oil. I like avocado, you might like canola or something like that. You just wanna make sure it's a neutral oil rather than something like olive oil or sesame oil. Um, and we're gonna get this pretty nice and warm, like pretty hot. And I'm gonna do that on a medium heat. And then I want you to grab your bread and then a pair of tongs because we're going to flip it. Let's take a look. Okay, so you're adding your piece of bread to some nice and hot oil and butter mix, and you're going to do about a minute on each side. You should see it get some color. You should see some bubbles forming in the middle. And once you've flipped it, you're going to get your cooked rice, your par-cooked rice, and then begin to evenly spread it across the bottom. Um, and then you're gonna poke a couple of holes all the way down to release some steam, add a couple extra pads of butter, and seal it. So for me, at the five minute mark, I took my temperature down from medium to low. Okay, so friendly reminder, every five or so minutes, give your pot about a quarter turn so it's cooking evenly. So technically you shouldn't like do these checks, but we're just gonna take a peek at how golden our tortilla or lavash is looking. And I like the color that I'm seeing here, but I want it to be a darker brown. So I would at this stage give it 10 more minutes on that low setting and then get ready to flip. Okay, the faded flip is back. We have taken our rice off of the heat. We have a platter that is larger than the size of our pot so that we can flip it and everything is safe. And then we've got some of these things so that we don't burn ourselves on the steam. Um, what are these called? Pot holders. So we're gonna place our platter atop the pot like so. And then, say a prayer. That sounded good. 
Okay, here it is. It's a little messy on this side there, but that's okay. Um, it's a really nice color. It's super crunchy and crispy, and it's got a nice golden brown to it. If anything, I would say this could have taken another five minutes to be a little bit closer to that color in the middle, but this is also totally a great presentation, so go with what you like. Um, that's it. Enjoy it. Let's crack into it third tidy down. I hope you love it. I hope it's delicious. Like I said in the overhead shot, I think this could have standed to be like a little bit darker. Um, so yeah, just take that under advisement. You can make it a little bit darker. But for me, I, I get a little bit nervous with my induction stove because it, it tends to like burn things in the middle. But okay, I just broke off a piece. It's so good. Try it. Let me know what you think. Nusha John. And we'll be back with some simple Persian dips, and then a potato tag very soon. Cheers.